The government has designated the Thames Gateway region as a prime development area. As London expands eastward, 13 of the 14 zones in the gateway are at risk from both tidal and river surge. In spite of this, 120,000 new homes will be built in the floodplain. Many, like this development just below the Thames barrier, are already on sale. Developers are salivating at the prospect of a boom, but critics say the government's strategy is a huge risk. And it's a really, really straightforward issue. Is it sensible to concentrate a lot of new development in low-lying areas on an estuary when we've got climate change and sea level rise? And the answer is, well, probably not. This may be a predictable line from an environmentalist, but even the government's chief scientific advisor questions the wisdom of this approach. The water has to go somewhere, and, and that somewhere is often going to be a floodplain, and you're not going to want to have buildings in that area. We have to adopt a planning policy in which we reduce the building very substantially in areas that are prone to be floodplains. Here we have the sea flooding through an estuary with a... These new housing developments will certainly prove a test for the Environment Agency's strategy of risk management. Part of the role of Sarah Lavery and her team is to offer flood risk advice to developers intending to build along the Thames. They can provide computerised models like this one of Greenwich, showing how different areas would be affected by flooding. The purpose of this is to provide advice to developers and to the emergency services um, so that they can actually understand how a flood might propagate in their area and this will enable them to make much better decisions. So again, if it was to flood, what happens is once the water gets to a certain level, the concierge will be alerted. Mm -hmm. The Environment Agency is not due to deliver its strategic flood management plan for the Thames estuary until 2008 at the earliest. By then, many of the Gateway's developments will have been approved without a complete flood plan. The Agency's current flood risk assessment is not a legal obligation for developers. The Environment Agency, essentially, which is a key player in all of this, does not have enough power to say yes or no to individual developments. Uh, which are being built. This new development highlights the problem. The developer originally planned to build the property right to ground level. The Environment Agency objected on the grounds of flood risk. Fortunately, on this occasion, the planning authorities agreed and the developer was refused planning permission. So as you can see, we're actually on the ground level now, mm -hmm. but the apartments have been built above the still so that if there was flooding to take place that it would only come to this level and not to the actual apartments. Forced back to the drawing board, the developer had the block redesigned on stilts and with a flood warning system installed. The speed and scale of climate change will call for radical thinking on flood defence in the coming decades. The stakes for London couldn't be higher. Well, we've managed flood risk very well, particularly since the um, establishment of the Thames Barrier and associated defences. But if we fail to continue to manage flood risk effectively, London, quite simply, will not be sustainable as a world city.